and I'm bringing you guys some Star Wars Imperial Assault streaming today um, for video recoil. Apologies for any background noise. I am uh, I am stuck in my bed. I hurt my knee today, uh, or re-hurt my knee uh, playing basketball, and so I am, for all intents and purposes, crippled today. Um, let's see, what's this dice roll that just came out? So, uh, we're watching here a game between uh, Average Joe Gamer and Do or Do Not. Uh, Joe is running Han Rangers with Jen, Hera, Rebel High Command, Smuggler, 3PO, and Gideon. So, no R2. Um, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 activations, 9 figures, no R2-D2, which is very interesting for a Rangers list, because they really want that card draw. Versus Spectre Cell with motivation on Zeb. And let's try to get this set up here. Um, so far, do or do not. Uh, I saw before I pulled up the game. If you see this spot I'm highlighting right here, that's where he moved his Ezra with his um, Blitz movement and then with his Brash. If you guys don't know Blitz, um, it's one of the missions on Lothal, which will probably be coming into the rotation. And um, basically, you have a whole round before your actual rounds where you get to take turns moving your figures up to eight spaces. Um, so, basically, a standard four movement double, four speed double move. Um, you get two VBs, victory points for each stash you control. There are eight of them on this map, so lots of points to be had. Um, but Ezra was down here. Jin was right here. Um, I know he used Gideon to focus up Jin, uh, I believe. Yeah, because Gideon is gone. Um, Jin attacked Ezra and stunned him. Um, he used part of freedom to move from here up in here to attack Jen, but Jen moved away with her nimble movement. He only did four damage on that attack. Um, so he must have low rolled with Ezra. Um, now we have, let's see, a Spectre attack coming out. Um, he just used Zeb to to use motivation to clear away Ezra's stun and move him up a space, I think. And then uh, he can move two more. Uh, so Ryan Janway was clearing the up there. It looks like he tried to use motivation to remove his condition and heal one, but motivation. Let's take a look at motivation here. So he's got motivation on Zeb. Zeb has line of sight to Ezra, uh, or did. Uh, let's see. Let's pull up motivation here. Let's pull a motivation on the side. Um, that way you guys can see it nice. Um, I'll hang out with you in a bit. I'm recording a game right now, though. Oh, okay. Well, if you want to hang out, just let me know. Um, okay, guys, so motivation, you can see here, reads, Unique figure only. Exhaust this card during your activation and choose a friendly figure with a lower figure cost than you with line of sight to you. So no notice that that figure has to have line of sight to you. You don't necessarily have to have line of sight to it. That can create some interesting situations. Um, that figure may discard a harmful condition or recover one damage. You can't do both. Then that figure gains a movement point. So either get rid of a condition and gain a movement point or recover one damage and gain a movement point. So I think... Um, and they're just talking here about how they think motivation is the best one point for Spectre. And I think that there's a good argument for that. Um, it's it's probably a little matchup dependent, but um. So let's see what happened here. Hera was able to live. This was the roll with Ezra. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, he rolled too many surges. 
Um, one damage short, but he was able, he should have been able to recover two there. I guess he was at five damage and he recovered two to put him at three. He got rid of the stun with motivation. Um, I think Jin used element of surprise. Or Hera, maybe it was Hera. And they attacked Ezra. Uh, but Ezra's chilling with just three damage. I don't know if Heart of Freedom was played to move him up there or if he had already taken the damage and then he moved up. So we missed that. But um, either way, I don't know if Jen got off one or two attacks before Hera got off her Sean Ezra. But Hera and um, Jen are both able to survive um, thanks to not the best Ezra rolls, and uh, Jen's cunning is very helpful for her. Um. Usually not so much against Spectre, though. Well, against Ezra, because he can just usually over-surge. But, I don't know. Sorry, guys, we missed that roll. He's got Eb Zeb tucked away safe over here, so I guess... Did he take a shot with any against anyone? I have to agree, Doc can be great, but no guarantee to get tough luck with Spectre. That's true. Um, so doubt, you can deplete doubt um, at any time to force your opponent to re-roll a uh, attack die. And um, that's great because paired with tough luck, you can get rid of any die. And especially against figures with range, you can you can ultimately basically just make the attack miss and, and completely miss the damage. Um, but if you don't have tough luck, it's not as powerful. Um, Doubt also is typically not as good in the Spectre Mirror match unless they're running extra armor. Uh, you don't know if you're going to have any tokens and stuff that you can even use it on. So I think that's a lot of reason uh, Doubt loses some value. But it is it is very strong against uh, especially mercenaries, but also against um, Empire because Thrawn and the DTs just like to hand out those tokens. And um, pulling a surge off token off of Vader can be huge, especially for a figure like Kanan or Zeb. Um, so he used Force Vision with Kanan. He's moving Kanan up so he can get the defensive reroll for Ezra, um, along with setting him up for next round so that he can, because uh, he's already used Spectre this round, so that he can. Uh, use Ezra's ability much to learn where he can turn a die to any side. Not re-roll, but turn a die to any side if a friendly force user is within two spaces, which is extremely strong. So. <sighs> Spectre has complete control of basically three-fourths of the map right now. Um, has he, let's see. He still has Sabine and Hera left. He can still move Hera down here to this spot between the terminal and the control position and get another um, two points on another card, which, you know, helps mitigate Spectre's uh, struggle with his card draw. Um, and this smuggler just got a pretty lucky shot against Ezra. A smuggler getting in any damage versus Ezra is actually pretty, uh, pretty lucky. <laughs> Smugglers, I mean, that's a max roll for a smuggler right there. Now, they don't have a surge for damage, though. They only have a surge for Pierce, which is fine versus Ezra, because he already has two built-in blocks when he's in Spectre's cell. Um, they have surges for Pierce 1, 2 Accuracy, and Stun. So maybe he was trying to get in the Stun so that um, if he has on the lamb, there's a 1 in 5 chance that he is on the lamb right now. 20% chance. Um... 
I guess the hope would be if he's stunned, he can't he can't use it. Um, there's there's pretty low odds of that happening though. Uh, half of the sides on Ezra's die are um, evades, and one of them is a complete dodge. So there was literally a block or a blank, and then he would have to roll. Uh, yeah, and even if he rolled the block, he wouldn't be able to do it because he would have rolled three damage and a surge. So he wouldn't have gotten any damage through to get off the stun because you have to get off damage to add conditions. So he really he had to get a blank and then roll what he rolled here in order to to put a damage through and stun Ezra. So um, really low odds there, but hey, a damage is a damage. So. Uh, can't complain there. Okay, so he's deciding to give up the two points because he wants to keep Harris safe. Um, I, I get that. I understand his thought there, but But, I don't know, like, he's just got Han left after he's going right now. Are these his rangers? Okay, here comes the rangers, so, I guess he didn't want them to go for Hera. If they had gone for Hera, though, that, was, that would be a win in my book, if you respect yourself. Because now you've got Kanan and Ezra in your face. Um, Zeb's just around the corner, he can get, he can get in position for next round. So, I mean, I would say, why not? And then Sabine can come off the spire once you have this area down here. She can come take this position over here, maybe, and still be pretty safe, um, depending on when you move her. Uh, okay, so there went out a roll that did no damage. Uh, was that his focused ranger, too? And this is this is looking brutal. He can't even get any other rangers in in a spot to do damage. He does have Han with the focus. He can put Han in a spot to where he's gonna get two shots on Ezra before. But he's gonna draw cards between the first and the second shot. So He's got a chance to draw on the lamb. And a pretty good chance because he's going to draw three cards. So this is not a four damage after how many attacks has it been? At least one with Jen, maybe two. One with Hera, one with a smuggler, and one ranger. And after all that, you've got four damage on Ezra. It's just, just uh that's just not looking good. So now what do you do with these other rangers? They don't have any targets. They can't they can't get to Ezra. And I think he made a mistake. He put um so many dudes up here where Gideon and all these guys are. He he didn't leave any spots for his rangers. Cause you have to account like when you're facing Spectre Cell and motivation, you got to account for a bunch of extra movement, which it's really tough. It's not easy to do, but um, I don't know. If you're going all in on, on Ezra, you have to go all in. And that's the worst power, power about all this, and, and Ezra just drives me insane because after all this, I mean, he could get him up to eight or nine damage, and he could just on the land the next attack. And then the next round, he can just double move him. He can brash him away. And then if he has initiative, which right now, do or do not, should get initiative. Uh, he won't even do anything with against it. Like, that's not even a dead Ezra. So... 
man, I don't know. If Spectre Cell is played correctly, uh, then they're very tough to defeat. All right, he's going here for Hera, and that's not a great roll. He can re-roll both of his blue, though. Right now, that would just be one damage. Is he is he okay with that? Why would you not just re-roll? Alright. Two damage that time. Was he not re-rolling? Oh, he's only at four range. I guess, um... I, I feel like he could have had line of sight from here, though. In this spot. I think I think he would have had a line of sight from there. I mean, I can't really check it right now because then I would be showing them what I'm thinking about. Yeah, Joe's saying not a single surge. Um, half of the sides on the blue die have a surge, and half of the sides on the blue die have just one damage result, either uh, damage or surge. And half of them up too. So yeah, blues, um, blues a toss up fifty fifty every time. Every time you roll it. Um, and here comes Sabine coming off of her spire, uh, which this is actually kind of a risky move. Um, she's coming up. Um, I think he used Harris call the shots there. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, he added a damage to put it at six. So his low roll in the blue, um, gonna keep uh keep that ranger still living. Uh, okay, interesting here. Now, I don't know if I agree with this choice now. Man, now you got, your forces are split up. I don't know. Oh, uh, and that's a rough Han roll. Let's see, he's re-rolled the, okay, there you go. That's better. Let's see, he'll probably re-roll this white die with Kanan. Oh, ouch, and it stays a blank. So, that's four damage right there. Han's got to put in his work. He's Alright, he's going to have to really just hope he doesn't draw on the lamb here. Because he wasn't able to finish it, and he already used Hera. Uh, if he'd used Hera, he could have only added one more damage, though. Did he only roll two dice? Oh, he rolled three. Oh man, that would have been a great moment to have tools. So, I don't know. Should he have abandoned Ezra there and gone for Sabine is my question. He had Han right here, I think. One, where was Han? Or maybe he was here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's make sure he hasn't played any cards there. Yeah, he's only played Element. So, one, two, three, four. He had Han here. He could have gone one, two, three, four. Uh, maybe he wouldn't have had a line of sight there, actually. I don't know. Uh, okay, it looks like this is Han's shot coming out. And he's doing. He's got a reroll. Oh, man, that stinks. 
Han's not going to do enough. He's only going to put one damage through. So one damage. That's uh, that's a pretty big. That's a pretty big swing there. Not not getting that kill. Did he already? I think he already reeled, right? Yeah. So one thing you can notice on Vassal, um, I didn't pick this up till recently. If um, if the spot has white around the die, that means that it's only been rolled once. But if you look here, at the background between like this blue die and this green die with the one range, uh, one surge, notice how it's gray. So it'll be great if the die's been re-rolled. Can Hera use her call shot for... So I'm just giving... They had a rules question. Um, can Hera use her her call shot for in around which she already used it earlier. No, if you hadn't used it, you could though. Okay, positioning advantage comes out. And it looks like that'll do it. So he didn't have negation. Uh, if he had negation, if he had negation, I think you'd definitely play it there to keep Ezra alive. And then you have the chance of brashing Ezra. Um, and even if Joe had taken initiative, you're forcing him to take more shots to kill Ezra, which isn't guaranteed. So that's a big, that's big. Losing Ezra there is big. Did Ezra put in enough work? It's hard, it's hard to see. I, I mean, he, he seriously wounded Hera and Jen. But, um, Sabine is so far away that she can't really do anything to grenade them to finish them off. Like a one, two damage side grenade would kill um, would kill Hera and Jen, which is a 50-50 shot, in case you didn't know. Um, two out of six times, she'll throw a grenade and get one damage. One out of six times, she will get nothing. And half of the time, 50% of the time, she's going to get two damage. So, if your opponent... If you roll two or three of them in a game, I mean, it's not surprising. I mean, it's heads, it's a heads or tails thing, right? It's like rolling heads three times in a row. It's it's not it's not super improbable. Um, do or do not is joking. Wait, the goal is to distribute damage as much as possible. King of figures is better. Um, Joe Gamer said, "I heard killing figures is pretty good." So he's joking because. Look at all this damage that was spread out. The Ranger and Hera both lived with one health. Jin lived with two health. And none of them died. So, which is big. That's big against Spectre Cell. So now Kanan's all by himself up here. So what do you do with Kanan? Because now if you're facing against Hera, Hera you've got to worry about um, on the Lamb. Han could have on the lamb. Um, Kanan's not as reliable an attacker as Ezra. Um, so I don't know. Um, do you go for the ranger? If he had... Uh, Force Surge, that would be perfect to finish off um, 
I think what you do is you move up and you attack the ranger and you force surge. Okay, so it looks like Hera went here. She moved up one and took a shot. Interesting he chose to go with Hera first. But I guess the... Th okay, and I'm, is he tapping Spectre now? Yeah, so he taps Spectre. He's just trying to kill off these rangers, because if he can kill them off... And that's a really good roll. Gets both plus one and pierce two. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's just enough to do it. Um, yeah, that ranger would have need to have rolled um, a triple block there against that offense roll to keep one block, to keep it alive. Um, he's got a card highlighted here for Spectre. What could he have? I don't know how this ranger could stay alive. I don't think there's any modifiers that exist for hunters, troopers. Um, like, for example, um, Brawlers and Guardians have um, um, Parry, I think is what it's called, which adds a block while defending. It's basically positioning advantage, but instead of the damage, you're adding a block. Okay, that was really loud. So he used Call the Shots there with Hera. Um, I, don't, I don't know why he needed to. He already had. So he said adding damage just to be sure. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah, I see that because he's probably not running it because you don't see it very much in competitive lists. But there is um, a command card called Hard to Hit. Um, but you know what? Hard to Hit is reroll defense die. So, and the reroll steps occur before modifiers. So. I can't think of any reason for why he needed to use Call the Shots there. Um, other than the fact that um, her figures, his figures are so far away from Hera and Sabine. That, that's pretty much the only time he would have been able to use it. Now he plays Strength in Numbers, um, which is pretty dope. And pretty uh, really strong card for Spectre Cell. You really gotta watch out for that, especially if you're going against Ezra. Ezra's still alive. Um, he can move up and pummel somebody, and then you can go into someone like Hera, and then uh, tap Spectre to have Ezra do another attack. It's it's just absolutely brutal. So yeah, killing Ezra there was a big deal. But was that a good trade for two Rangers at this point? And it looks like so Hera is going to die from a one damage grenade. So he's lucky that Jen survives that. That was a fifty-fifty. Um, and then he's going to celebrate it. So it's interesting here. Now his Sabine is uh, extremely exposed. But I guess his thought is, oh man, and then out comes Rebel Graffiti. And it looks like Joe does have negation. Um, so if Spectre has, if, if do or do not has to take initiative for next round, he's not going to be able to stop it probably. Um, unless he's carrying Calm Disrupt. Or um, stall for time, and he can put it back on the top of his deck, which I don't. I don't see that card played very often, so I wouldn't expect it. He's got Hera in a really good spot now too. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'm comment on that. Both of them between the terminal and a control um, critical position. So that's just four VPs just by doing nothing. Um, he was able to stop Rebel Graffiti. 
Um, so that that helps, but let's see. He's down five. What do you do now? He's got to make a decision who to go after. Do you go after Kanan or Sabine? Uh, looks like he's going for Kanan. Oh, man. And... Oh, man. Losing Hera here really stinks because uh, he doesn't have a surge. And uh, he didn't roll one. So... No damage. Jin really needs a focus. Um, was going with Jin there the right play? I mean, I guess he's trying to stun Kanan in the hopes that he won't be able to kill his other ranger. Because uh, we haven't seen a single hunter card come out yet. I don't know if you guys noticed that. <laughs> Not one single hunter card has come out. So he's got one ranger that he's hoping can play assassinate, hide and reflexes if he's running it, which he probably should be primary target. So yeah, um so maybe that is the right play. You've got a one, two, three, four, five. He has to get six movement to get through Jen. Um but Spectre Cell is often running uh, movement cards. He should be running urgency in this list. One, two, three, four, five, six. If he's got urgency, he can run right through Jin and then take a swipe at that ranger. Um, okay, let's see here. So he's going with Zeb first. Um, unfortunately, Okay, that's a really nice play right there. So he uses Zeb to move Sabine over so she's contesting a critical position. So not only is she more appetizing target, who can potentially dodge, but she also is going to get him two VPs at the end of this round. Um, and it looks like he's, he has Zeb here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's going to contest this. And, oh, Jen gets a very critical dodge. That would have been a very dead Jin. Um, so a big dodge coming out there for Jin. Uh, that Zeb double moved to do that, I think. I, I didn't see any movement cards come out. No. So Zeb double moved and did his free melee attack. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah, interesting that he moved back one there. I just would have thought maybe he would stay at the critical position because I don't see uh, I mean it blocks line of sight for Han who hey buddy you need to go to bed okay I love you guys um, so it looks like he went with Gideon here, and uh, thank you, honey. Um, he focused Jen and moved her up two spaces, which is a really nice play there. So he's blocking, um, or he's not blocking anymore Jen to get off her hair trigger when Kanan goes. Um, so he's going to activate Kanan, and at the start of activation, he uses Force Vision. So, okay, he's declaring Han is going next. Uh, Jen should be able to do her hair trigger here. Yep. Um, so, it's, uh, since it was Kanan's activation, his start of activation triggers first before Jen gets to trigger hers. Um, but after his force vision is over and he had no other start of activation cards or abilities, she gets to take a shot. And let's see. Um, he's going to get through his plus two and his pierce and stun. This was a good roll for him. He max rolls and he gets both surges, which is just what he wants. 
Um, let's see. Did Kanan has not rerolled yet? Um, do you want to reroll with Kanan here? I don't think so. He's he's getting the damage through either way, and there's a 50% chance that you roll lower and then take more damage. One, two, three, four. So six damage, pierce one. So four and a stun. Really nice attack here from Jen, making up for the lackluster one last time. And you can see here the uh, the the importance of focus for Jen. Uh, statistically, she just doesn't do much without it. She really needs hair and she needs focus. Um, whoops, sorry guys, that's another video that I've been trying to upload um, that you guys will get to see later. We're watching this game right now. So now Kanan is stunned. So Kanan is not going to be able to attack. So really nice working with Jen there. Um, bless you. My kids have snuck out of bed and they're reading books in bed. But I can't get up with my crippled knee. You know, um, I never thought about this till now, but it's actually kind of thematic that Zeb gets motivation because he was a uh, he was he supposedly one of the last Lasots. Um, I think that's his his uh, his race is called the Lasot. Um, but he was a general, if I remember correctly. I'm only on season three of Rebels right now, but um, that's kind of makes sense that he would be motivating um, other people to do stuff because that's what he would do. So, so I like that. It's, it's even kind of thematic to put motivation on Zeb. Um, and let's talk about like, so okay, clearly motivation it doesn't work towards um, Kanan because Kanan and Zeb both cost eight. Um, is, is motivation better on Kanan or Zeb? Um, Kanan is usually up in the grill and, and more likely to die first. He's, he's a pretty early target. So I think it probably is better with Zeb because Zeb's often hanging back a little bit. Uh, so Joe's saying here, huge mistake on my part moving those two rangers down south at the time. I thought Preston was to kill here to prevent a car draw to lessen the chance we're on the land for Hans in a round shot. Yeah, and I, I see where he's coming from, um, but I think splitting up your units there was a, was a really poor decision, and you could see there um, from the power specter that Sabine just went out and, wi and you know, wiped house. So, um, yeah, that was definitely a mistake. Um, you know, this map, is it's kind of tough for Han Rangers because... Uh, because of this blocking terrain right here around Zeb and Han and all these figures, um, it's harder to draw a line of sight down this lane. Um, and with Sabine taking the spire, this whole half of the map is pretty much controlled. Um, but if your rangers get stuck up here, then it's harder to get your rerolls, and it's really hard to run them away. Um, so now he can, you know, he's doing. He basically flanked them with Hera and Sabine. Um, I don't think his chances of killing Hera were that high anyways. Um, without cards. And if he had had cards, he definitely would have played them. So I don't know what he has now. But uh, yeah, you've got to keep that ranger alive at almost at all costs at this point. Uh, if Jin dies, Jin's put... Jen's put in her work. Um, anything, um, anything extra um, Jen can do is what we call in Louisiana lane yap. A little something extra. <clears throat> so while I was talking my mouth off here, um, so Kane and Clear stun and moved to the critical position to contest it. Han moved up to get a shot on Kanan. And it looks like Kanan's at 9 damage now. So, um, sorry guys, I missed that roll there. I was just talking strategy. But, um, Kanan's in a really bad spot now. He put Han in a spot so that he can shoot him. And then Black Market Prices comes out. Um, 
who did he go with here? Did he go with the smuggler? Yeah, if you're not running R2, you have to run black market prices, I think, in the current meta. Um, I was a little down on black market prices um, before Lothal, but because it, it was pretty easy to sit R2 on a terminal and keep him safe for a little while. Um, you you can't do that now. Um, you You're not guaranteed this terminal and that card draw. So, Zephyr's done coming out. Um, so, I don't know. Okay, so he discarded set for stun. Um, so he gained zero VPs from it um, to keep the other cards that he drew. Um, so probably a good trade there. I'm sure he's got better stuff. We haven't seen on the land. We haven't seen any of his hunter cards yet. He's he's drawn like a lot of his low cost stuff. <sighs> Focusing up a ranger, and it looks like uh, he's just got to really hope that. He's going to draw three cards, so he'll have six in his deck left, presumably. Do or do not, that is. Um, if he draws, take initiative, then Joe's in trouble. Because he can he can easily move Zeb and get off two attacks and, and in all likelihood take care of that ranger. So... Can Han do five damage to Kanan in the round? I don't think so. Not focused. Not unfocused. Maybe if he drew tools there. What do you think, guys? What's the chance that Han can do five damage to finish off Kanan? So C-3PO focused the Ranger... Um, is this the end of No. Oh, the Rangers hadn't gone yet, that's right, because they were defeated at the beginning of the round. Um, you have cards. <coughs> Why is he only re-rolling one die? I would re-roll that too and try to get, uh, does he have tough luck? No. One, two, three, four, five. Why not reroll the two? Because if you get the surge, then that's two damage. Kanan gets a low roll here. Okay, he is going to reroll it. And man, that's just unfortunate. He just hasn't rolled the surges. Pretty unlucky. So that's going to be four damage. Just one shy of killing Kanan. Does he have any cards? If he's got assassinate, he would have thrown it out. He already played positioning. Hera's gone. And losing Hera early really hurts. That's extra damage. Every round, that's one to two damage, at least, that you're losing. I wonder, he must not have tools. If he had tools, I would have played it there. If he if he's not playing it there and saving it for something else, he's just being greedy. Okay, now Kanan's comes out. So he's only going to take um, three damage. Okay, Assassinate does come out. I, I didn't realize Kanan, Kanan would just, there was just, being a little slow there with rerolls. So, nicely done. Got to use one of his hundred cards at least. 
He still got heightened. He still got. Um, what else does he have still? Primary target. Han's still well alive. He can use tools. Jen's still alive. Smuggler's still alive. So that's another big swing there. Both of the Jedi are gone. So whatever force user cards do or do not has are completely obsolete now. He's got a card highlighted he didn't use. Uh, maybe he used heroic effort. So we're at end of round now. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six each. So, what do you do now? Han's going to get an end round, round shot on Zeb. Hey, sweetie, you need to go to bed, okay? I know, honey, but daddy's got a hurt knee. Um, heroic effort comes out. And they draw their cards. So now, so now we'll see if he drew to... Okay, guys, so um, the next couple of minutes, uh, my my kids uh, kind of got a little upset, so I had to re I had to record over the old audio because um, it just wasn't really great. Uh, so tools for the job came out here. Hans end of round attack on Zeb, um, and then uh, the big thing here is will 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 do or do not draw take initiative, and will he play it? So a really good roll from Han here. He does one less than max damage. Um, so he ends up putting six through, I believe. And um, so a respectable shot. Um, and after this, Joe's going to do something interesting in just a minute here. Um, but I don't want to spoil it. So first Joe's start a round, and he doesn't have anything, and do or do not does not have take initiative, so, uh, so Joe's going to get to go first, and he decides to go, uh, with Jen here, and he's going to put her in a really interesting spot, and that spot, um, just between... Uh, just underneath the critical position between the two walls. Excuse me, you can't you can't see it now because uh, I'm moving all the stuff around. I was trying to figure out what was going on there. But um, he's going with Jen, and unfortunately, Jen does not get a surge again. Uh, so no damage onto Zeb. Zeb high rolls his three block, and. Uh, Jen's able to move over and uh, get in a position where he could hair trigger onto either uh, Zeb or Sabine. Um, now what was interesting here, I was trying to figure out earlier, would there have been a way for Jen to move five and still be safe from Sabine's grenade and from Zeb? And I don't really think there was. I think the only way for her to stay safe would have been to like double move um, and just hope that do or do not does not have any movement cards. Um, but then the question is, is it even worth it because um, he's not able to get off any shots. Um, so he ends up putting Jen right there and um, Do or do not is going to go with Sabine in a second here. And, uh, and 
Now, Jen definitely put in her work this game, but losing Han, uh, not not Han, um, Hera, losing Hera early really hurts. Has hurt her this game. There's been at least twice, at least two times I can think of where a Hera surge um, would have really helped Jen. Um, so I, I do think his Hera was a little overexposed early in the game. Um, but we'll talk about some of the mistakes towards the end of this video. Um, so Jen shoots her hair trigger shot. Um, and unfortunately here, um, they don't realize it at first, but Jen is one range short. And so he has to search for plus two accuracy, plus two damage, which is a great surge, by the way. Um, even Han has um, plus two damage separate from his surge with damage and accuracy. So, um, so yeah, I interrupted them to tell them that uh, they, they made a mistake here. Um, and I don't normally like to interrupt, but if it's a rules issue, you, you sometimes kind of have to. Um, so, so yeah, he ends up surging for the plus two, which, I mean, it's pretty inconsequential, like, I mean, unless he decides to go for Sabine, which at this point, why would you do that? You, you're, you've already put, you're already putting in work into Zeb, and with Sabine, you're risking the dodge, so... Um, but he, what he really need needed was the stun, um, and so yeah, it's it's a it's a bummer here because, I mean, generally the only card Specter Cell is going to run to clear conditions is Heart of Freedom. Uh, you don't really see Rally very often, um, and Zeb. Zeb's uh, Zeb can't do anything to clear it. <sighs> this round in a meaningful way because Sabine would have already gone. Um, so, so unfortunately he's not able to get the stun through and he's able to move up and he kills, uh, he kills Jen and puts a damage on the Ranger and then he's able to, um, take a shot on the Ranger here. Um, that's something I hadn't thought about when I watched this game the first time. I, I don't know. Let's see how much damage he does here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so he's able to kill the ranger, but it's interesting to think if he hadn't got any grenade damage, would that have been enough? I don't know. I, I can't really see. My screen is kind of minimized while I'm watching this again. Um, so maybe if Jen had been in a different spot, he wouldn't have been able to grenade the ranger. Like, maybe if you move Jen uh to a spot that's like two spaces below where the critical position is, then he can't hit Jen and the Ranger, I think. Yeah. Um, and then it would have been a longer shot on Zeb, but I don't know. So yeah, so Sabine puts in a lot of work there. She takes out Jen and the Ranger. Um, and he, he throws down Rebel Graffiti. Uh, at this point, he's he's in a lot of trouble. And, and uh, I think the audio should be okay at this point. So we'll call it over to, um, to what I said before. Discard that card and cancel its effects. I... I 
I don't understand. He didn't stop celebration. I don't know what's going on. I thought I thought he stopped rebel graffiti earlier. Okay, so he's double checking kill points. Um Yeah, um Joe's in a really tough spot now cuz he can get at least 4 VPs from um from yeah. Yeah, all he has to do is kill Gideon now. Um, okay. If he calls Gideon in this game, um, this is his rain shot. Oof. A max roll here. Yeah, that's uh, one short, but he's still got um, he's still got his double red attack. So Gideon would have to roll three block, and he'd have to roll two. Uh, what? Why didn't he move again? I don't know why he didn't move again and go for the kill. Was I missing something there? I mean, I guess it's game either way because uh, he's getting initiative. And uh, Zeb's not going to die. Uh, so he can kill Gideon and Rebel Graffiti in this game. He doesn't even need to Rebel Graffiti. He'll just... He'll kill him in all the game. So I... Uh, I don't know, guys. Do you see any way that uh, Han can come back from this? Because... Uh, okay, Veteran Instincts comes out. Um, Veteran Instincts is a nice card, but, um, I don't know, like, it's, it's hard to justify it when there's so many one-pointers out there, especially if you're running Hunters, uh, So he uses Veteran Instincts on Gideon, and he double moves him. I mean, I guess he's using it for the evade, but um, he's still got... Oh, Zeb already went. Has Herrick on yet? Okay, he's taking back that move. Uh, I don't like that spot either. Like, what's the point? Sabine can just throw a grenade in this game. Like, why would you put her... Put, I think you need to put him next to Han. Um, I don't. I don't get that move. Is he hoping to kill Sabine with Han?
Okay. I don't know if I agree with that move, though. He's still, like, he's not safe from, he's safe from Zeb, but he's not safe from Hera. I mean, maybe he's just hoping Hera roll, roll, low rolls at this point. Maybe that's his only hope. Um, he hasn't played on the lamb yet, but it it's inconsequential now. Like, all the smugglers are gone, except Han, and he's not. he doesn't need to shoot Han. That's not his, his path to victory. He's ignoring Han. So... I don't know, guys. What do you think would have been a good spot for Gideon? Um, I think... Who does he have left? He's... 3PO, Smuggler, and Han. Hmm. I don't know. I, I think you at least needed to get some critical position points from Gideon there. I don't see how uh, how putting him there is the better call. Hera can still move up, and has he even used Spectre Cell yet? He hasn't. Even, he has used it. Okay. I mean, Hera can still get run up, get the kill. I mean, and, and if she get if she loses the critical position, I mean, who cares? Gideon's dead, and he only needs four more to win the game. Which uh, he'll at least get two from Chopper. So I mean, all he has to do is play Rebel Graffiti, and then it's game. I don't know. I think I think the play there would have been run get in as far away as you can. Maybe to the I I don't even know. I don't know. Has he played take yet? No, he hasn't played take. Um but do or do not has not played negation yet, so I mean, if he has a make my own luck, then there's a small chance he can come back. It's being really still here. I wonder if they're calling it. Yeah. I think you have this. You can just hang back and win on South Ejectus. Okay, we'll call it then. Han Rangers can't win throwing away two Rangers. Um, okay, give me just a second, guys, and then I will uh, give you some analysis. Um, what do you guys think? Did, uh, <sighs> did Joe have a shot this game? Um, I think he did. I think he misplayed his Rangers. Um, and I think that's what cost him. For sure. Like, I, I don't know if, if he, like, if he had played them right, if he could have won, but... It's clear that misplaying them did not help.
Well, guys, um, sorry again for any background noise. Um, I've had the kids going. We've got sleep going in the background here. Um, all kinds of noises in this house. We've got um, kitchen work and stuff being done. Uh, well, guys, there's another Spectre Cell win on the fall. Um, I definitely think Spectre Cell is beatable. Um, but you have to have a few things go your way. You, you really need your cards. Your card draw needs to be optimal. Um, you've really got to position perfectly. Um, like moving those Rangers up was probably uh, Joe's big mistake, um, exposing them to, to Sabine and Hera. Um, it would be interesting to see if he hadn't have done that. Um, he may have had a shot in this game. I mean, that's eight point swing. In addition to, uh, I mean, they. I think they should have stayed close to Gideon and three PO. Um, yeah. Okay. So they're talking about how he overexposed. So I'm just saying here, blocking off his rangers from the in-round shots really hurt. Because um, that's when he ended up moving them to get Hera because he wanted shots. Um, So, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, guys, but I think if he had kept his Rangers closer to getting a 3PO up here, um, instead of sending them down here, that would have prevented some Sabine shots and, uh, and Hera shot. Um, so Sabine would have been out of the game for, like, another round, and his Rangers would have been safe a little bit longer. Um, and even though Do or Do Not had initiative there, uh, he would have had a chance to um, to get off some ranger shots. So, all right, guys. So well, we're gonna call it there. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, a great game by Do or Do Not, Average Joe. Um, let me know any thoughts. Uh, we're all still trying to figure out the strategy for this map. Um, and then more generally speaking, what's the strategy for going at Spectre? Um, he was able to kill Ezra and Kanan. Um, he, he was close to halfway done on... Um, on Zeb there, but um, you know, I, I'm thinking back to, I wonder if putting Jen in, in this spot where she was, was the good call, because um, he already knew he had fleet footed. Oh no, he had, already, he had tried that afterwards, never mind. He wouldn't have known it when he was positioning her. But I think you, I think you should have committed her to going for Zeb because you can't split damage versus Spectre Cell like that. Even though you would have been able to stop Sabine, his his for all intents and purposes, once his Ranger was exposed, he needs to consider it dead. Like he's going to go for the Ranger. Um, so I think maybe if he'd moved Jin like to somewhere over here and um, at least guaranteed it. Uh, like keeping her alive like so that Sabine would have to make the tough choice of either taking a shot on the ranger or moving Sabine extra spaces to uh, I, I don't know w would there have been a good spot he could have put Jen that's a good question so he had Sabine here Jen started out here I think um, so 
one, two, three, four, five. Even with fleet footed, Sabine has a pretty decent range with her grenade. And would there have really been a spot where she could put he could put Jen um, without being exposed to the potential grenade? I don't think so, actually. So maybe um, Maybe that was the right call. I mean, he was just in a, he was kind of at that point he was just in a tough spot because of where his ranger was. Um, so, so he kind of was forced to split the damage there. Um, yeah, like I said, guys, let me know any thoughts you have on this map. Um, there are some good spots for rangers, like down this lane right here is is gold. Um, if a figure is exposed like on the edge like at a critical position and the rangers can pull back here and get good shots um, of course they have this whole hallway they have some great shots here uh, a few shots across like from the smuggler towards this terminal they can hit some good shots there um, and a few this way as well um, down at the bottom is not a good place for them um, that spire is it's pretty unforgiving like um, Assuming you're facing a Spectre with Sabine, uh, that, that's not a good spot for them. So, um, Of course, they would love to be shooting down this hallway as well, which is another reason I think having his Rangers up here would have been the better move. Um, and, I mean, it, it, it feels bad when you realize you haven't positioned your figures in a way to maximize your attack. So he had two Rangers that weren't getting those shots in round one. But getting them close to Gideon and 3PO so they're getting focused up and um, that would have helped prevent Sabine from uh, coming down this lane. And then if Sabine wants to come this way, the Rangers can still get some shots coming that way. So, I don't know. Um, I still think Han Rangers has a place in the current meta. I, I do think, even with doubt. Um, because, you know, it's kind of a counter thing. Like, if Spectre's not going to run doubt then Han Rangers has a chance, um, but they need their card draw. So uh, is is the problem the list itself? Like, do you guys think Jin um, was a better option here over, let's say, R2 and another smuggler? Um, if he has another smuggler, he's exerting a little bit more objective control, or at least contesting more objectives. Um, if he has R2 though, uh, he can get for, he can get the terminal, um, and maybe stay safe for at least round one. But then after that, he just kind of hopes he gets lucky. Um, would it have been worth it though for the extra cards? Um, in this game, it may well have. I mean, he still has six cards left, and look at like he played two of his hundred cards. All the rest were just mediocre stuff. And I don't think veteran instincts... Um, I, I mean, I can see why he put it in this list. Um, it's... It, it goes well with... Um, with Jim because uh, her and Han both want that evade. Um, so, I, I mean, I can see it for that. Um, I haven't really play tested it a lot. I'd love to hear you you all's thoughts on how good you think it is. So, all right. Well, we're gonna call it there, y'all. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, look forward to catching some more Imperial Assault games soon.